Hello, I'm Fenland Fisherman and welcome to another fishing video. Well, hello and welcome to something a little bit different. I've travelled back from Scarborough, so yeah, I'm still at uni, but I've actually come home for the weekend for a session that I've been very excited about for the last few months. I'm actually here at Langtoff Fisheries with Mick Brown, and we're going to be filming a pike fishing video today for you. Just a nice video on sort of how to tackle gravel pits at this time of year. So yeah, I've been very excited about this, just waiting on the arrival from Mick now, and um, hopefully it's going to be a good day's fishing, and we're going to show you how to catch some pike. Today we're going to look at catching pike in dense weed and when I say dense the weed in this lake it really is dense. In places it's three to four feet off the bottom, in other places it comes right up to the surface. But it's not a problem because I've worked out over the years a technique of fishing in weed with dead baits and uh, it's a very simple pop-up method that anybody can soon come to grips with. Uh, basically we're ledgering and what I'm trying to do is get the dead bait up above the weed line, which means I'm probably looking at getting it about three feet off from the bottom. Now you can just cast your dead bait straight into the weed, and believe me, the pike would eventually find that bait, but popping up, it puts it into their line of sight, and it helps them to find it a lot quicker, and you'll get a lot more runs in these weedy pits if you pop your baits up. Well, that didn't take long. <laughs> it pays to get down to your venue fairly early because uh, first thing in the morning this time of year can often be the best time. Doesn't feel a particularly heavy one. I'm pulling quite hard but there's a lot of weed out there and I can feel it cutting through the weed. I'm using quite a hefty three pound test curve rod and uh, it's not because I'm after really big fish, it's, it's just that I have to pull really hard to get the fish out of the weed or to keep them from the weed. Here it comes, there you can see the popped up bait sticking out of its mouth. Now the next thing you'll notice is that the bait has come off but the balsa stick is still retained on the wire link. There it is in the net. Most of the weed has come off. That's the sort of thing you have to contend with in these pits. Not little bits like that but great chunks of it. Luckily that one came out quite easily.
Right, well as you saw I struck straight away and the hooks are exactly where they should be. Just, just in the front there. Very easy to take out from the top, no need to go through the gills for them. For safety reasons I get the hooks well out of the way. I've got a really good grip, you can see I've got a really good grip on the jaw of that pike. Lift it up to take a look at it. And you can see these fish in these gravel pits are beautifully marked. Lovely dark green fish with lemon spots. So that's a lovely fish. Well you can see it's not that difficult to catch in dense weed if you go about it in the right way. And when they're beautiful fish like that it's really worthwhile. We're in business. I'm keeping the pressure on because the last thing I want it to do is go down in the weed. I know there's a lot of weed between me and that fish. As long as I keep it up high in the water, don't let it bury itself, it'll be fine. Sometimes it can work against you pulling really hard like this. If it's, the fish is only lightly hooked, you might pull the hook out of its mouth, but I don't let that worry me too much. The main thing is to get it back safely and not get it stuck in the weed. But with 30 pound Power Pro on the reel, I can pull really hard and I know the line's not gonna break. So I've chinned that one out. As long as you do it carefully, it's not too difficult. Now I'm holding this fish over the water now, so even if I drop it, it's just gonna go into the water. No problem, I just couldn't see for the bait. So there we are. Another beautiful pike from a weedy gravel pit. feeling it's out there in the wind and the waves somewhere <laughs> it's probably not a huge pike but I've got to say in recent years I, I don't really worry how big they are I just I just love going pike fishing Right, well we, we could have a oops, come here. we could have a bit of an unhooking problem here. One of the flying trebles is caught in the net. So I'm gonna have to take it very carefully. 
that hook's caught in the net so the pike is tethered at the moment get that one out get it out of the way and I'll have to sort that tangle out later but let's have a quick look at the fish once again it's a beautiful fish you can see it's very lean and that's partly because it's early season and they haven't really started feeding yet but also there's not a great deal of food in this pit the cormorants have really hammered the roach and perch in recent times anyway I'm going to put this one back and I wouldn't normally do this but I've got a bit of a tangle in the net I can't put it in the net so I'm going to carry it carefully I'm going to keep it close to the ground I've got a good grip on it and there we go lovely fish well, <laughs> well there's nothing wrong with that one that one's a really strong fish but uh, I think it's time I put the kettle on now really well so far and if I'll take this time out to ask you a couple of questions and questions I think everyone wants to know the answers to but I'm going to start with so what's it like to be well a professional angler and it must be really nice just catching fish for a living well I suppose it's like any job it, it's great if it works and you know but um, um, but there's more to it than just catching fish yeah well um, I mean catching fish is the easiest part I, I mean let's not you know make any bones about it anybody can catch fish uh, and that's that's some the, better than others well yeah but i mean it's not difficult there's, there's a hell of a lot of people out there who know how to catch fish yeah but it's what you do with those fish that counts and um if, if you want if you want to make a living from this and earn some money from it then um the people who are going to pay you will want more than just you catching fish on their bait or their tackle yeah um you, you've got to help them market their products um you might have to help them develop products uh, I mean, on the product development side, I mean, I've got a, a big, a big start because uh, uh, that my background is in production engineering. Oh, really? You know, I, I, um, in my uh, early days, I, I was a uh, production engineer in, in car factories in Birmingham, and the sort of stuff we're making today, you know, all the components, fishing bits and pieces, you notice it's nearly all made from plastic, floats, lures, alarms. Well. That was my bread and butter in the old days. You know, I, I, I know I, I could design the tools to make these. I could set up a production line to make these. That's my background. So that's a distinct advantage. And um, I've also done a lot of report writing through, through the work I've done. Yeah. And, you know, to do simple things like, um, you know, a few predator tips in a magazine. Yeah. Compared to the technical writing I used to do, that's very easy. So, yes. yeah. so what I'm saying is that you do need to have some sort of um, something more useful to, to offer the trade than just being able to catch fish. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, well you've been fishing for years now, haven't you? So, it, it'd be hard for you, but what would you say would be your best fishing moment of <laughs> well, all time? People always ask me that, and, and I can't really put my finger on it because uh, I've just had so many moments of just, you know, that absolute feeling of, of fulfillment, you know? Yeah. And it's not always been the biggest fish. Um, I think one of the most memorable pike I caught, for example, wasn't my first 30 pounder. We, I mean, when I caught my first one, I was really pleased and I never thought I'd catch another one. No. So when I caught my second one, <laughs> that was the one that really sort of, really made me feel, yeah. um, you know, good. Um, and as it happens, I went out and caught another one the next day and, and that was unexpected. But uh, I, I've got a lot of pleasure from just, you know, great days fishing when I've caught a lot of fish. and. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm very interested in learning new techniques. You know, I've taught myself uh, fly fishing for pike, jig yeah. fishing. Uh, I'm doing a lot of drop shotting at the moment. Uh, learning new techniques, I get I get a real big buzz from that. And and it's not it's not what's on the end of the line. It's the technique of working out how to get the bites and getting the most from it. 
So even after, so even now, you're still getting pleasure from, well, still getting a lot of pleasure from angling. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And you know, I'm, I, I think I've been doing it too long for that to disappear, really. Um, I think as I get older, and I realise, you know, time's running out as it does for everybody. I, I must do other things with my life as well, and you know, I've got other interests I want yeah. to pursue, but. But I know now that if I want to go fishing, I can just go out and you know and enjoy the fishing I want to do, and oh. and, and uh, you know that's how I'm going to carry on. Oh, brilliant! See, that's another interesting question. What what are what what is Mick Brown's other interests? You know, what, what else do you like other than <laughs> well, fishing? Well, I, I mean, you couldn't think of two more um, different interests really. I mean, I'm interested in. Now you're all going to laugh at this. <laughs> it, it, I've always wanted to build a model railway, and. Um, when I was about 16 I started and it never came to anything and all my life I've dreamt about building this model railway well now my grandchildren have come along I've started building one for them excuse. and uh, I, I couldn't I couldn't just have one of those layouts where the trains go no, around no. and around I, I want to um, I want it to all be digitally controlled linked to my computer uh, and then my other hobby believe it or not is uh, playing rock and blues guitar so, <laughs> they don't seem to go together that well, but <coughs> no, no, no. But um, I think that would have been my second choice. You know, if, if I didn't become a professional angler, I probably would have, you know, liked to have been a, a guitarist. I'm not going to say a singer because I haven't got a singing <laughs> voice, but I'd love to play guitar professionally. But. Well, Mick, thanks for taking your time to answer a few of the questions, um, and hopefully we'll get a few more pike out in the bank during the session. Well, let's hope so. Yeah, it's definitely a run. that was cast to a different part of the lake. I've got to know this lake quite well over the years and I know that down there there's a slightly deeper channel with not too much weed in it. And I uh, had to wait a little while to get a run down there but uh, it's usually quite reliable for a run. Once again, not a huge pike, but uh, I just love catching them. If everyone was a big one, it'd get a bit boring, I think. You'd just want one even bigger still. Right, now you might find this one interesting. Have a look at the bait in its mouth. And you can see that that one's uh, taken a kebab rig. There it is, taken on a kebab rig. Right, I'll just remove the rig and then I'll I'll show you exactly what it is. Let me just put the pike back first. So that one was caught on a kebab rig and uh, this is what's left of it after I've taken it out of the mouth of that pike. And basically all I've done is uh, utilised loads of scraps of uh, fish on a rig pin and um, just impaled them on a size 4 treble and I've used this bait flag just to uh, retain the pin. As I say it's a plastic pin with a poly ball which pops the whole thing up and any bits of fish you've got lying around from uh, old bits of scrap bait, I mean in this instance I've got three um, herring heads on there and uh, that's just popped up above the weed and to be quite honest, a pike, it'll smell that and it'll, it'll be as tasty to a pike as if it was a whole fish. But the beauty of the kebab is that because it's made of all these chunks, it's just oozing, it's just oozing with blood and oil. And, uh, you know, it, you've really got, almost got a, an attractor and a bait all in one there. So that's the kebab rig. It's very, very simple. And you can buy all the components in the shops, rig pins, poly balls, bait flags and traces with one size four treble. You can use a, you can use a single on there uh, if you want to and I'm being distracted because I've got to run on the other rod. <laughs> oh 
Well, it certainly turned out to be a busy day. <laughs> it's not always as busy as this in this swim. Um, but the reason I'm getting plenty of runs is that I'm casting long range. And most people don't fish too far out in this swim. They fish with the float. But because it's pressured, I'm using a ledger rig and I'm casting a lot further than most people would fish and they probably push the fish out of range but I'm actually reaching them with this setup. Now I've got to be very careful with that one because there's a treble flying outside the pike's mouth. So I'm going to try and unhook this one in the water. No, it's not going to work easily so I'm going to make that treble safe with my forceps. Then pick up the pike and you can see I've made that treble safe by gripping it with the forceps. Now I can see what I'm doing. And get a better grip on that treble. Just needs a bit of manipulation. And it's out. You never know what you're going to encounter when you bring a pike in. You have to look at each one on its own merits and see how difficult it will be to take the hooks out. Most times it's pretty straightforward but um, as long as you think about what you're doing and plan it carefully you should be okay. suddenly changed it's got a lot brighter and uh, as a result the runs have dried up so it was a good job we got down here early when it was quite dull and overcast uh, that happens quite typically but we may get a few runs later you never know uh, I'll run you through very very quickly with the setup I've arrived at for fishing in weedy gravel pits um, over the last 25 years this is the tackle I use nowadays a pretty hefty rod this is a Shimano Purist dead bait distance rod, three pound test curve, real pokey rod for pushing baits out and striking at range. Um, this, is, um, this is a top of the range 8000 bait runner but any of the Shimano bait runners will be good for this sort of fishing. My reel's loaded with 30 pound Power Pro braid which is really important for pulling fish out of dense weed like this and now we'll get on to the important bit the terminal tackle. It is quite simple really on the main line I've got a run ring and a bead, run ring, rubber bead, and I've tied on a big um, a big clip. Um, you can get these from Fox or Gemini Sea Tackle. The important thing is it's a really, uh, a really strong clip that won't bend out when you're pulling hard in the weed. And now I'm going to put on my lead. Well, to get the bait up above the weed, instead of putting the lead sliding on the main line as you would normally, uh, I've got the lead sliding on a mono link of about two and a half feet long and I keep these neat on a pole winder. And it's very simple. Just take the clip off one end of the lead link and clip it onto the run ring. Then I've got a sleeve that runs up over that. So you can buy all these bits and pieces in the shop. There's a nice sleeve to stop everything tangling up. And then at the other end of the lead link, I've got a similar arrangement, a clip and a sleeve, and I'm gonna put my weight on there now. And I'm using a weight of two and a half ounces. That clips on nicely, sleeves up, 
and that again will help in the weed, it'll stop it all clogging up, that'll pull nicely through the weed. Now the link is made of 15 pound mono and you might think well that's a bit, uh, a bit strong but uh, what I've done, I've tied a couple of overhand knots in it and uh, if I should snag that knot will break quite easily but, uh, it, but the link is still quite uh, robust for casting. So that's it really, all I need to do now is clip on a trace. Here's a trace all ready made up with a pop-up bait inside it. And again that just clips on. And like everything in, in this setup, everything pushes together neatly and sleeves up. And you might think it's going over the top with all these sleeves but it actually streamlines, ev streamlines everything and stops the weed from clogging it up and tangling. And, uh, and that's it really. I'm using a pop top yellow mackerel here and uh, just to show you how, how what's inside it I'll take my two size fours out. Inside the bait is a balsa stick connected through a clip to a wire link and that wire link just pulls it into the into the bait the wire link slides up and down the trace and then I just just hook the bait on in the normal way. So there's nothing to it really, it's not uh, it's not really rocket science, it's, it's a pretty pretty straightforward rig once you've used it a few times. So there it is, all ready to cast. Wire trace, two size fours, there's the wire link going through the fish and it's connected to a balsa stick. Just push that in a bit more. And that will pop up above the weed by the length of the trace plus the length of the ledger link. So that's going to be popped up about probably three feet off the bottom which is perfect for in this weed here. Right let's see if we can get another one before we finish. Right, I think something's picked that one up. Yes. Oh dear, I've got to pick up on the other rod. You need to hit it. <laughs> oh, I thought there was one on this one. The, the bobbin kept dropping back, which indicated that it was running back towards me, and I kept tightening the spool. And, and sure enough, that's exactly what had happened. How about that? Well, we really are having a great day, plenty of action and uh, I suppose really it's perfect conditions for dead baiting, the water's not too cold and uh, it's that early time of the season when the pike are really active. So I hope you've enjoyed the session and, uh, and I hope that um, you'll have confidence fishing in weed after you've seen how to rig up. Well the fishing's been so good today, uh, I couldn't let the day go without letting George catch one <laughs> and uh, we've both had a run at the same time and uh, two more lovely gravel pit pike. Yeah, brilliant stuff, thanks Mick, no, awesome day. No, it's a pleasure. Really nice looking fish there. This yeah. one on the, kebab rig, on the kebab rig as well. Yeah, that one was on the kebab rig so um, you're no longer a kebab virgin, you, <laughs> you can boast that you've caught on a kebab now. <laughs> brilliant. Alright, thank you. Should we try and put them back? Yep. So we can get a double one of these. Oh, that was a bit livelier than mine. There they go. Brilliant, thank right. you. Fantastic. Good day. Fantastic session. Well, I hope you found that an interesting session and uh, hope it's given you a little bit of insight in how to tackle pike in weedy gravel pits. Uh, as I say, I've enjoyed it, I hope you have, and uh, maybe see you again sometime.